In this standard, we're going to take a look at writing the equation for a sinusoidal function if we can see what the graph looks like. So uh, in this first example here, they've given us two points, uh, two key points on this sinusoidal graph. And the first thing to make sure we're comfortable with is that you know we can use either sine or cosine for uh, for any of these equations, right? A sine is just a shift of a cosine function. So you can feel free to pick either one, but a lot of times one is a better choice. So for example, in this problem, they're giving us two different maximum values. And so for me, what I want to immediately think about is coming up with an equation that looks like this. Because cosine, I know its starting place is a maximum. And so it's just really convenient to think about, okay, I know this maximum, so that makes it easy for me to kind of figure out what the shift ought to be, what the h is in my equation. All right, but let's go through this systematically here. Let's, uh, let's start with the, the midline. So y equals k. Right, so that's of course going to be halfway between the max and the min. Well, the max is happening up here at seven, the min is happening at one, so exactly halfway between those would be four. So we know that our midline is y equals four. All right, our amplitude, right, that's just the distance from our midline up to our maximum, which is three. And then, of course, B, remember, what do we know about B? We know, I'll write it over here, that the period is 2 pi over B. But then if, if B is what you want to know, then, of course, you can just solve for B, right? B times P equals 2 pi. So we know that it's also valid to say B is 2 pi over the period. So... For us, b is going to equal 2 pi over, and of course the period is just the difference between these two maximum values, right? So our period, we'll write right here, period is equal to 4 pi over 3 minus pi over 3, which is equal to pi right, 3 pi over 3, which is pi, and so that gets stuck right here, so that means that b is equal to 2. And then lastly, h is our shift, and since it's clear that we've sh normally cosines maximum is at 0, but instead it's over at pi over 3, so we've shifted to the right pi over 3, so we're going to say minus pi over 3 in our equation. So to put it all together, this will be y equals 3 times the cosine of 2 times x minus pi over 3 plus 4. And remember, since pi over 3 is my two shift, true shift, I've got to have it in parentheses with the 2 on the outside, right? Remember, the argument needs to be factored in order to be able to see what the true shift is. All right, we'll take a look at example two now. So it wants us to write an equation for this uh, function. All right, so here they give us a maximum and then a minimum value. All right, so let's go through the motions here. Uh, how about the midline? So the midline, we are we are down here at negative 6 for the min. We're up at negative 2 for the max, so that must mean the midline's right in the middle at negative 4. And then that means our amplitude then is 2. Okay, now at this point, 
uh, let's talk about the period. This can be a little bit tricky here. So the period, right, I think a common mistake might be just to subtract these two numbers. But we've got to be really careful. All I've done for between these two points is go from the max to the min. That's exactly half the period. So what we need to do is say we're going to double one half minus negative three halves, right? Double the distance between them, and that's going to be our period. So that's two times, that'll be four over two. So our period here is actually four. So that means b is going to be two pi over four, which is pi over two. All right, so we can start to write this out now. We have y equals. Now, if I can help it, I kind of like to avoid having to do vertical flips. So if you thought of this as your starting point, then that's fine, but you got to put a negative out front of your equation to indicate a vertical flip. So because I know cosine uh, near, starts at zero at its maximum, I'm going to pick out the maximum so I don't have to do any flipping. So clearly this has been shifted to the left three halves, so I'm going to put plus three halves inside my argument. So we'll have two times the cosine, pi over two, and then in parentheses, x plus three halves, and then minus four for that equilibrium. All right, you know, and just so you know, uh, let me just write another possibility. So there are more, there's more than one right answer to these. You could have also said negative two times the cosine of pi over two times x minus a half. So we're thinking of a shift to the right a half minus four. But since that's at its minimum uh, there, that's why I have the negative in front. All right, so I kind of want to just do an application problem um, that involves writing down an equation. Um, so it says, or excuse me, that involves an equation. Uh, we're given it to us. It says the equation describes the height of a person in meters on a particular Ferris wheel after being on it for t minutes. So what they want to know is what is the diameter of the wheel? Okay, well, if we think about, you know, our Ferris wheel here, the diameter would just be, right, the distance from the lowest point that you ever achieve to the highest point you ever achieve. Okay, so wouldn't that be two times our amplitude, right? So for us, two times 21 would be. 42, and what are we talking about here? Meters, right? 42 meters. All right. In part B, it says, what is the highest that a person will get off the ground? Okay, well, presumably, people's feet aren't dragging against the ground at the bottom, right? So it's, it's up some, isn't it? And that's reflected in this 29. So what we know is that since 29 is the midline, Right, that's exactly halfway between the lowest and the highest point. And then from the midline up to that highest point, we know must be 21 because that's the amplitude. So we can just take 29 meters plus the 21 meters, which gives me 50 meters off the ground. All right, and then the last question here says, how long is it? take a person to make one complete revolution. Okay, and I'm afraid that I can't get both the, uh, so let me just write down the equation here. Since I can't see it, h of t is equal to 21 sine two pi over three t plus 29. So how long does it take a person to make one complete revolution? Well, making one complete revolution, that's, what our period is, right? And so we need to know what our period is, but we know that that is 2 pi 
over our b value, which is 2 pi over 3. But that's just 2 pi times the reciprocal of our b value. But of course, my 2 pi's cancel. And so that tells me that it takes three minutes to make one complete revolution.